56 points against them, a career high on Thursday night. And on the flip side of that, do the Spurs have an answer for one PG-13? Paul George averaging over 30 in his last 11 games. Speaking of a recent run, congratulations once again to Coach Greg Popovich, who passed Jerry Sloan for third all-time in wins in NBA history. I mean, we know how great Pop's been, but just hearing that number is special. Now, Brendan, we talked about this almost a month ago when the Spurs finally looked like this great two-and-a-half-decade run seemed to be slowing down. Since then, look at what they've done. Actually, 14-4 and four since early December. What do you see as being the key to that turnaround, Brendan? I mean, we sat here and thought, wait, is this finally it happening? And you said, no, nope, can't rule the Spurs out just yet. You can never really rule the Spurs out just because Pop is going to find a way to do Pop type things. And that just means that he's going to tinker and play around with the lineup and play around with their style of play until he finds what fits for that unit. And that's why I give Pop so much credit. A lot of coaches can't do that. Not that those coaches aren't good. They just know what they know and they know and they coach really well inside their box. I've had some coaches that they know the Princeton offense or the triangle offense and that's all they know. Greg Popovich, he can change it up. He can run some triangle principles. He can run some uh, individual post principles. He, he was the godfather of this ball movement era. He can do many different things, and he's found a way to spark this team. And a lot of it is by getting LaMarcus involved, uh, of course, getting DeMar involved in, in good areas. I think uh, Forbes at the point guard has really uh, helped solidify things. And they're not shooting a lot of threes, but they're getting quality threes, and they're knocking those three downs. And the most important thing, they've become better defensively. At the beginning of the year, defensively, the Spurs were a joke. Now they're back to being the respectable defensive team they have been for the last decade. Yeah, I think they bought in on a style for sure, and it starts with LaMarcus Aldridge. They are playing through LaMarcus almost every possession one way or the other. DeMar DeRozan is really being taken advantage of from a playmaking perspective, much more so even than the scoring aspect of what DeMar does. He's really gotten the ball moving to a point where everyone they bring in off the bench is getting really good looks. You saw in that graphic, they're leading the league in that span in three-point shooting. Davis Bertans coming in, shooting 52% during that span from three. Bellinelli's shooting 46. Bryn Forbes is shooting 44%. So they're getting contributions all throughout that roster. But the other thing Pop does, to your point about being able to do almost anything, He's going to play the guys that are playing well. Right. No one is sacred in a pop run situation. If you're not getting it done, you sit down and he plays someone else who will. And I think you've seen that that entire team now brought their defensive intensity because they understood if they didn't, they weren't going to play. It's a rare thing you can do when you've got the roster they have. And you say the roster that they have because for years the names ring bells, right? Tim Duncan, Tony <laughs> Parker, Manu Ginobili, and even Kawhi Leonard. None of those names are there. And when we look at this roster, you think LaMarcus Aldridge has never really proven it in the, in the postseason. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, we know he's struggled in the postseason. Do you have faith that this group of guys can get it done in the playoffs when you look at this Spurs roster? What do you mean the by get it done? The way it's currently constructed. Do you no, when you say get it, get, is get it done, multiple win one series. Win multiple. multiple. In the Western Conference, they have a shot. They have a shot. Like, I can't say because the Western Conference, I don't really have faith in anybody outside mm. of the Golden State Warriors. I have questions. That even the Denver Nuggets, who are number one in the Western Conference right now, those young guys for the Denver Nuggets have never been in a playoff series. So I have no confidence in anybody outside of Golden State to win multiple series because I don't know who's going to look like what, how teams are going to look uh, as far as when the lights get the brightest in the playoffs because there's so many different teams that are so close. When you look up in the win column, you could clearly see – a six knocking off a three this year because you don't know what the con you don't know what the confines of that matchup is going to look like and you don't know who's really going to have the advantage. Like the Lakers could be a seven seed and if the Lakers took on Denver with a healthy LeBron James, guess what? It might be advantage LeBron James. So it's it's just one of those things you never know where it's going to go in the Western Conference. So the Spurs right now they're jumbled up with a lot of teams underneath the Golden State Warriors where I don't know what I'm going to get. It's interesting that you mentioned that six and three because last year we saw the New Orleans Pelicans behind a great series with Anthony Davis do just that. When when you look at what you said, LeBron James is being LeBron James. You always got to consider him to be a guy you pick in a series. But the Spurs don't have that type of player, as you say, a pole one type of player, right, Griff? So 
Do you see this roster, or is, is Pop just that great that they can do it without a pole one player? Well, Pop is special good, and that's not a surprise. We showed the graphic. He's third all-time in wins, and has, <laughs> he's been special good for 20 years. I, I think what's interesting about their roster, and we talked about it briefly just a moment ago, teams are not used to defending the post on a regular basis. The game is being played so differently now everywhere else to a huge degree. What Pop is doing is zigging when everyone else zags, and he's playing two bigs all the time. Very often he's got LaMarcus and Jakob Pertl together on the court. Pertl has enabled LaMarcus to actually be serviceable on the defensive end as well because he's covering up a lot of the mistakes. Early on in the season when this team was really struggling defensively, they were struggling to get any stops when LaMarcus and Powell were on the court together. And Pop put in Jakob and started getting a much better defensive uh, contribution from his five, which then enables LaMarcus to focus on what he does best. So I think one of the things about a Pop run team is, again, he's going to find a way to get them their most efficient shots. Some teams are all about what the most efficient shots are across the board. Houston. They're going to shoot threes. They're going to try to shoot layups. They're going to try to get to the free throw line. We don't shoot pull-up twos. DeMar DeRozan leads the NBA in pull-up twos, but that's what he does, so Pop's, Pop lets him be good at it. Tom for the Road Ahead, presented by Dodge, starting with tonight's game in Oklahoma City. The Spurs play five of their next seven away from San Antonio, so it's going to be an interesting run before the Spurs to try to maintain their recent streak and headed in the right direction and continue to climb the Western Conference.